Let's see a show of hands for the data junkies out there. Come on, you guys. Fess up. Got a new uh, M.2 card I want to tell you about. Gigabyte just announced on the 1st of uh, July. Today's the 3rd. And uh, let's go to that press release and we'll read it. This is the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme Generation 4 add-in card. High capacity, ultra fast access. A maximum of 32 terabytes of storage with dual fans, 28 gigabytes access speed. Now what's interesting about this is this is an Aorus Extreme. Take a look at the picture of that. That looks like that has a couple of fans like you'd see on a video card. And that was originally one of our beasts with all the M.2 cards is that little bitty stinking fan they had on there. It's like, you know, what's up with that? How's that going to be uh, of any help? And what about when you have to replace it? And oh, by the way, you know, it was quite some time ago we went to larger fans and cases. Why? Well, larger fan, moves more air, makes less noise. Simple. So why we had these silly little fans? In fact, uh, we could put a bug in somebody's ear for these fans we've got right now on the motherboards. Either not the chipset's so bad, but that other little fan in there that makes all that noise. Sounds like a whirly bird. How about a bigger fan so we can have uh, less noise on that? I'm just saying. I digress. But as far as this goes, what I don't know yet is if there's a switch on the card, I would expect there would be, so that we could address more than one card in a machine. Especially if we're going to put this in a workstation. Now, a high-end desktop, you know, maybe not so much. But in a workstation like the WRX80, absolutely. I would want to be able to put at least two of these cards, uh, preferably more, in a machine. So let's go on through the specs and see what they've given us. Now this card will come populated with eight 4 terabyte second generation drives, as I said to reiterate, using the E18 controller. And those are Aorus Extreme drives. Now right now we don't know the price of it, but we can ascertain what the price of this is based on the price of the card from High Point, And they probably use the same chipset. There's only one company. There's several companies that make chipsets that'll do this. But on the high end, like the high point, that's a Broadcom chip. And my expectation, this is probably the same. So we're going to go through some of that, and I'll show you how I figured that out. You can see if you can see what I see. But anyway, as far as the price of the card, so we're looking at a card that's about $1,000. Each one of those drives, I would say, probably is in the neighborhood of around $800. So we've got eight of those. So $6,400 plus the card. $7,400 is probably going to be the price for this kind of card. Uh, that's my guess for those that want to know. And this is not a real RAID card. This is what I call a poor man's RAID because there's three types of RAID. There's different levels of RAID. We'll probably do another video about that. But as it relates to this card, there's also 10 temperature sensors on here. Now, there's two pieces of software that can be installed. One to check the thermistors would need to have the SSD toolbox installed. And number two would be to install the Gigabyte Aorus Storage Manager. And from that, then you can create the RAID. Now, if you want a bootable RAID, that's got to be done from the hybrid BIOS. So you would use the Storage Manager to look at it, but you wouldn't use the Storage Manager to create it. I don't care for Gigabyte software, but if you're going to see those temperature sensors, which I think would be handy, and if you want to uh, look at the drives in the array, I think that would be handy. Now, this brings up an interesting point to answer another question that we've been asked. Uh, when you got your drives in a RAID array, uh, a RAID array will support trim on the drives, but to be able to see the drives individually so that you can uh, perform tasks like a firmware update, you got to pull those drives out of RAID because the software, the operating system, first has to see the drives before the individual software can see the individual drives. So I'm going to put that out there because that's a question we've been asked before. So as we go back to the specs, this also has an aluminum uh, cooler on it, which is different from the 4-drive card, which has copper. I would really like to see one of these, but I don't, I don't know that we'll get that chance. And I think I'd rather look at the Gigabyte card than the High Point, but I imagine they're probably both based on the same chipset. I'll get to that chipset in a minute. What we do know, because of the uh, PCI Express 4.0, we know the chipset on the workstation, which is the WRX80, and we know the chipset on the M.2 drives, because these are Aorus, Generation 4, which is second generation PCI Express 4.0 M.2 NVMe drives. What gets me though, and this has been redone from when it was originally published. What gets me is they talk about the speed of 28,000 megabytes. Now, to, to put this in different terms, um, when we've tested the cards before, we've used first generation PCI Express 4.0 drives. Those are capable of... Uh, 5,000 megabytes, 5,000 megabytes per drive. So for those in RAID, 
is theoretically literally the equivalent of three drives minus one. So to get to 28, if I'm using eight drives and if it has on par performance, my expectation would be that I could exceed what PCI Express 4.0 can do. So I'm going to take you to another chart, which is going to be in the uh, description for the bibliography to uh, take a look at the different speeds of PCI Express 3, PCI Express 4, PCI Express 5 on down the line. Now this chart is from Trenton Systems. And this is for PCI Express 4, PCI Express 5, and PCI Express 6. Okay, right now we're at PCI Express 4, 32 gigabytes per second, which is 32,000. This card is capable of 28,000. And the drives that go on this card are capable of 7,000 megabytes each. Okay, if I have four drives, uh, first of all, let me take and show you a chart using the first generation drives with the speeds we got so we have some balance, something we can... Uh, look at and compare. Now this is on Crystal Disk Mark and this is with our Gigabyte TRX40 Designare using the uh, Gigabyte Aorus M.2 PCI Express 4.0 NVMe quad card. Now with four drives, first generation, 16,000 megabytes on the read, 15,000 megabytes on the right. So we have four drives that are capable of 5,000 megabytes each. So that's 5, 10, 15. The point of that being that if you have four drives and you put them in RAID with this type of RAID, RAID 0, you eliminate the speed of one drive and the capacity so you have the speed and capacity of three drives. That's 5, 10, 15. That's a roughly about what we see here. So on this other card that we're talking about right now, if we can do eight drives and there's 7,000 each, we're looking at three sevens, which would be 21. 21 times 2 for eight drives because we eliminate two, which is actually six drives, that 21 times two should be 42. And as we look at the other chart, what we actually can get up to is 32. So my point being at 28, at 28,000 megabytes, which would be 32,000 megabytes, we're at the ceiling. We've topped out, we can't go any further. So the reason I want to mention this is because I think it's a good value to go with uh, like the card that comes with this box and I keep referencing this and I keep coming back to it because people keep asking me what's the best bang for the buck and how do I put one of these cards on a machine well it's got to be a high-end desktop or it's got to be a uh, workstation plain and simple and because of the scarcity of these cards right now the easiest way to get your hands on one of these cards is with this motherboard because this motherboard includes two cards one that RS card which is PCI Express 4, a quad card, AIC. And number two, you get the uh, PCI Express 3.0 Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card. Best bang for the buck. But the point being, as we look at the numbers, we're not going to be able to get over that bottleneck. And I want to show you the chipset that I think they're using in this card. We'll get to that in just a second. But I want to show you these stats, how this compares, because I, I can't, as much as I want the speed, and there are cards that can do faster. Some of you have talked about that. May, may get a chance to look at one of those one day. I don't know. There's a card out there that, well, if you have to ask, move on down the line. If you have to ask how much, forget it. But anyway, to reiterate, if we're at 32 uh, gigabytes and we should be getting 42 gigabytes, we will exceed what the bus can do. And this is only capable of 28. And right now, with first generation drives, we're right at 15, 16. The point being, if we had second generation drives on this card, we should be right at 21. 21,000 megabytes is a better deal for the money with four drives than 28,000 megabytes with eight drives. And that's my point. Let's, uh, while, we're, while we're doing this, let's take a look at what High Point has, and I'll, and I'll show you some more information. Now, the card that compares with this, and I'll have links up to all this stuff as much as I can, and we'll update the links in the Gigabyte as soon as they get some product information because I'd really like to see a PDF manual. But right now, the press release is all we have. Okay, th that card that Gigabyte has now released that we're talking about compares with the High Point SSD 7540. That's uh, PCI Express 4.0 but 16 8 port, meaning 8 drives. And what we have to consider when we're looking at this, you know, to run one of these cards, you have to have a 16-lane slot if it's not bifurcated. Now, because there's eight drives on this card, the card has to be bifurcated, but it still requires a 16-lane slot. Think of it as each drive has to have four PCI Express lanes. It's four PCI Express lanes up, four PCI Express lanes down, meaning four lanes to each drive. So if we have eight drives, we go from 16 lanes, yeah, to 32 lanes. So we have 32 lanes that go up 
That's why that special chip is so expensive. And then we have 16 lanes that go down. So there has to be a PLX chip in there to do that switching to let all that data come through without freaking out and going who's on first. High Point has some documentation on their website we can look at. And I got an image I was looking at, but I went over to, uh, let me show you. I went over to Broadcom because Broadcom is the one that makes the uh, Mega Raid cards. That's a real Raid card. Okay, Broadcom makes the chipset. Broadcom also makes the Mega Raid cards, which is kind of interesting. And I've got some more about Broadcom. I'm going to bring back to this in a minute. But the point of this being, what we have to look at is Broadcom PCI Express 4.0 and look at the chipsets they've got, the switches. So if we go over here to PCI Express 4.0, and what we have to consider is the amount of lanes we have to have, 32 plus 16. So if we just do the math real quick, 32 plus 16 is 48. So that chip that has 50 lanes is probably the chip that's being used. I'm pretty sure that's the chip that I have linked here. PEX 88048. Now I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty certain that's the chip. I know that High Point is using a Broadcom chip. My expectation is that Gigabyte is also using that same Broadcom chip. Now there are other chips from the other cards that we've looked at that use a different chipset. But on the high end, all I know from High Point, they're using this. I've looked at an image and from what I could ascertain, which was really grainy, uh, and after going through Broadcom and figuring out PCI Express 4 and how many lanes we had to have, this is the chip I came up with. The only way to verify that is to get one of the cards on the table, get the camera on it, and, uh, and look at it. But without that, this is what I've come up with. So you can do the research. You can see if you came up with what I came up with. So we know PCI Express 4. We know it requires a 16-lane slot. We know it has to be either a, uh, for, hot, for the uh, PCI Express 4, a uh, TRX 40 or a WRX 80 and then whatever else is coming down the pipeline. Now, a product like this, as it's positioned from Gigabyte, is for the enterprise, but that's not an enterprise product. That is what people want on the desktop, because it's still a poor man's raid, even though it's $1,000. But, as I have just made the case, I don't see, and I can't see justifying for the speed, for the throughput you get, a card with eight drives on it. It just, you don't, you don't get the bandwidth. And without the bandwidth, I think you're better off with two four drive cards. Um, that's just my opinion. But if I had a chance to test one of the cards and could see it, you know, I might think differently. But the card's not out yet, and the information on the website, as far as documentation about the product's not even out yet. All we have is a press release that's been changed twice. And I did PDF at this time because I want to keep track of the history. Vendors have a funny way of monkeying with stuff. It's kind of like Windows 11, how things keep changing. I got some more information about that we'll do in the next video. One more item. I'll leave you this one, one last little tidbit. The FTC charges Broadcom with monopolizing the chip industry. Well, I guess when you're the only high-end game in town, you can, uh, you can do that. But uh, hopefully, you know, with what's going on, things are going to start opening up more and we're going to see more chips. But uh, I'm excited about the card. I had to read it twice because it doesn't say it's a bifurcated card, but it has to be. It has to be a bifurcated card. And I think we figured out the chip. And I'll also have a link into Fizon for the E18 controller for those of you that want to research it. In fact, I got some stats I want to show you on that right quick. Now for the drives that are populated on this add-in card, what's relevant is the uh, E18 Fizon controller that's being used on those drives. The point of it being, because the question is going to start coming up about capacities. Right now the limitation is the chipset of the controller that's on the M.2 drive. And not the chipset that's the PLX chip that's on either the quad card or an 8-drive card. That was my distinction I wanted to make with that. And performance, it shows it'll top out right at about 7,000 megabytes, which is pretty much where we're at. And the point of this being, as we get closer to PCI Express 5, we are at the limit for what we can do with PCI Express 4, which is all about M.2 drives. It has nothing to do with video cards anymore. That may change in the future. So what we're going to see, according to PCI Express 5.0, is we'll take a controller, instead of being able to do like a second generation PCI Express 4 drive, M.2, at 7,000 megabytes, PCI Express 5 is going to take that to 15,000 megabytes. So this whole thing about a card like this, this card is about a year late. This card should have been put out a year ago. Same thing with a high point. Should have been out about a year ago. Because based on information that we've known about over the years, if it takes nine months to develop a motherboard, I would consider one of these cards like a motherboard, even though it's an add-in card. And if it's got a 12-month shelf life, 
uh, they're banking on that 12-month shelf life. But I, I think they're playing roulette. That's just my opinion. So I think it's a neat idea, and I'm glad to see that uh, Gigabyte's there. But with PCI Express 5 coming out, it's going to blow all this out. So we're at the limit with the controllers for PCI Express 4 for the M.2 drives. What we want to see is what's going to happen with PCI Express 5 and see if we get actually 15,000 megabytes per drive. That'll change the landscape when you can get one drive. Let's check these numbers again. That can go to 15,000 megabytes, whereas here we have four drives that are doing 15,000 megabytes. So I hope that kind of puts things in perspective. I want to thank you guys for watching. My name's Gil Boyd. I want to appreciate this. We're on to the next video. We're out.